Previously on the bill. Nicola Marsh, National Party of Great Britain. Break it up, come on. This isn't neighbour harassment, this is racial. I won't tolerate racism anywhere on my patch. You're very kind and I hadn't realised. So, should I be worried or flattered? Eh? Being paired with a sergeant? Well, we are three PCs down. Look, uh, I really appreciate your support yesterday. Any time. No, but I... I was feeling pretty low and I think I may have overreacted. No worries. The window's been put through, I see. Yeah. And from the inside as well, look, glass on the pavement. Don't miss a trick, do you, Sarge? Mr. Patel, Sergeant Ackland, PC Ken. Look what they've done. Who's going to pay for this? I know exactly who's going to have to pay for this. Me. Why don't you just tell us what happened? Two blokes came into the shop and picked on one of my customers. They only stopped when the window was smashed. I'm lucky they didn't go for me. Do you know what the fight was about? Two white men beating up one Asian. What do you think? Are you saying the attack was racist, Mr. Patel? Things have been getting worse here, a lot worse, and we all know why. Do we? Nicola Marsh. Ever since she started campaigning for a seat on the council, the mood's changed. What do you expect when people give a racist like her credibility? She might as well have done this herself. This is where we were born and brought up. Yeah. Yeah. Yet it feels as if we're being treated like second-class citizens. Local people want a fair deal, and that's why I've been elected to sit on this council. People want transport that works, education that delivers, and streets that are safe to walk on. I thought I was supposed to be the far right. Marsh makes them sound almost credible. That's the problem. They are to a lot of people. It'd be better if she was spouting crap. We could do it full sight, though. I doubt she'll make it that easy for us. I've had this shop ten years. Kids calling me Parky, I can deal with. When they wreck my shop, I should have stopped it. I've got a family upstairs. What if they pulled out a knife? No, 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 you did the right thing. The important thing now is that we find this man who was attacked. Can you give us a description? Dark hair, medium height. I've seen the guy around, but I don't know who he is. So what happened to him? As soon as the window broke, the two white guys legged it and the Asian guy picked himself up and went in the opposite direction. So, was he badly injured? Well, not so bad that he couldn't get away. What was he trying to get away from? Oh, I don't know. I voted mainstream for years and things just got worse and worse. I decided to do something yeah. myself and found there were people who felt the same way as me. Yeah. So you're happy to encourage racism? That's not true, Mr Sud. I thought my party were racist, I wouldn't stand. I live on the Parkmead estate. My next door neighbour's black and my sister's married to an Asian, so how anyone can say I'm a racist, I don't know. <laughs> the main thing round here is the money being spent on asylum seekers. Local people feel they're being put to the back of the list and someone's got to stand up for their rights. Rights for whites. That's what this is about. It's a problem that'll only get worse. And if we don't do anything about it, people will move out of the area and why should they have to do that? You've obviously got a very clear policy on asylum seekers, but what about other local issues, such as rising crime? I've already spoken with Superintendent Akaro about a worrying rise in racially motivated crimes, attacks on whites, unprovoked attacks. Rubbish! The facts speak for themselves. Isn't that right, Mr Akaro? Well, let's just keep this in perspective. We are looking into a few incidents that have happened in the local area, and we're confident that they will be dealt with. 
An elderly man was racially harassed in his own home, and a local boy was attacked by a gang of Asian youths after a night out. Disgusting. He's still in hospital now. Local people need protection, and I can promise you, I'm going to work hand in hand with the police to make sure they get it. Who's the bloke? Local community leader. I think it would be a good idea to get them both in a room talking to each other. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. All right, Sarge? Yeah, hey, I'm fine, thanks. Do you hear about this? Yeah. I don't know how he survived that fire. We were just saying that wherever he is, he must be a bit singed. Thank you for your opinion, DC Thatcher. But Des Tavern is likely to be in need of medical attention, so if he does make contact, tell us. All right. Attention, please. Now... Now, I know you like nothing more than keeping up with local politics, but just in case you haven't heard, we have a new councillor, Nicola Marsh, the acceptable face of far-right nationalism. Needless to say, there's been some tension in the air, and there have been some incidents. An Asian man was attacked by two white men in the corner shop on Wellstead Street earlier today. Now, it could just be a random attack, but given the current climate, we have to consider the fact that it may be directly related to Nicola Marsh's election campaign. Marsh is claiming an increase in racist attacks on whites, and she's making a big thing about it with the press. So, we have to take it seriously, because they certainly will. So, I've been looking at all our recent cases, and... We haven't had any recent racial attacks with white victims. Well, there was the night before last. A young white man, Chris Webber, was put in hospital supposedly by a gang of Asian youth. I wanted to investigate it as a priority. Any more questions? So what priority do we give to the Asian man who's attacked by two white blokes? Exactly the same. This is about keeping the peace at a potentially volatile time. Brandon, you can help Romani on both these cases. Yes, sir. The rest of you, be aware. We all know the service has been labelled institutionally racist. And there are those who will be waiting for us to make a mistake on this one. Let's make sure they don't get that satisfaction. It's a little bit predictable, isn't it, Sarge? It's because our faces fit, don't they? Super thinks by putting two Asians together, he'll get a better result. They might be right. I don't see how. We're investigating an attack on a white guy. Yeah, but the suspects aren't white, are they? I mean, don't you think the Asian community is more likely to open up to us than a white officer? Yeah, right. I'll catch you up. Sir! S sir, I think we're, um, blowing this out of proportion a little bit. If we focus too heavily on ethnic issues, it could cloud our judgment. Well, make sure that doesn't happen. Well, the Weber case could just be an assault. Which could be racially motivated. So is that why you've put me on this investigation? You're on this investigation because you're a police officer. Yeah. Oh. Not because of the colour of my skin, then. That too? Do you have a problem with that? Sir, with respect, a white superintendent wouldn't get away with that. <laughs> and you're the one lecturing me about being obsessed with race. Come on, have you any idea how many there were? Or was it one, two, seven, eight? Uh, I don't know. A few, maybe. But they came out of nowhere. I didn't have time to make out their faces. You can't even give us a description of any of them. Um, listen, why don't we just, um, rewind? Where did you go before the incident? A few pubs, uh, Base Head, Cat and Sparrow, a couple of others. Were you with friends? Yeah. Pity they weren't still with me when this happened. You were attacked at 1am. You must have gone somewhere after the pubs closed. We went for a curry. Where? Tiger Burning. Talbot Street. How much had you drunk? Oh, you know, a few pints. Were you drunk? I can handle my drink, love, if that's what you're asking. Was there any trouble earlier in the evening? No, nothing at all. But everything was fine until this happened. Well, even apparently random attacks have a reason. Yeah, well, you'd have to ask them that. But all I know is I didn't start anything. You've been really helpful, thanks. OK, thanks. 
You're just spouting the same old extremist rubbish. There's nothing extremist about my views. I'm just trying to do what's best for local people. And the fact is, we don't feel safe in our homes. Neither do I. I live around here as well, you know. That's enough. I asked you both here so we could try and find a way forward. You're both local community leaders, and with that goes responsibility. Which I take very seriously. And so do I. Then why do you keep winding each other up? When people see you attacking each other, what sort of message do you think that gives out? You're both adding to the problem, not helping it. And what are you doing to sort it out? What's happening about the attacks on innocent white people? We're dealing with it. What about the Asian man attacked this morning? Let me worry about the policing of Sun Hill. If this situation does escalate, it won't be because police officers are not doing their job. It's got to be amnesia. What? The reason this didn't turn up after the fire. What do you think? All units, disturbance reported at 142 Nilfield Road. Over. Sierra Oscar from 48. Show us dealing. Right, come on, let's get on with it. Is something wrong? Oh, I'm fine. I don't sound fine. Is it something I've done? No. If this is about you getting upset in front of me, you don't have to worry. Your best mate had just been sent down. Who wouldn't react like that? Let's just leave it, eh? You don't have to be strong all the time. No, I know. Do you? Come on, let's get on with it. Hold an ambulance already. Out of the way. What happened? I went out for the Sarnies and I've come back and I've found him like this. He's still breathing. Is he going to be OK? Where's the bloody ambulance? OK, so just keep back. I don't believe this. Can you get him to stand back? Come on, sir. Look, get your hands off me. Oi, you're not helping. Come on. Paramedics will be here any minute. We're just trying to do our job. What's his name? Cyril. Cyril Brewer. Uh-huh. He's my dad. Cyril. Cyril, can you hear me? He was with a bunch of lads. They were all lagered up, making a bit of a mess. Oh, yes. Average Friday night, then. <laughs> it always gets fun after closing time. Yeah, how do you deal with it? They all reckon they can handle a vindaloo, and they end up making five pints to call Dad. Well, we take the money, we have the last laugh. Why do you remember Weber in particular? He must get loads of lads coming in here all the time. Well, he reckoned we overcharged him, but it was all sorted in the end. You noticed any trouble? What do you mean? Well, since Nicola Marsh was elected. Yeah. There has been a bit of a tension. It's scary that she actually got onto the council. Oh. Must be difficult for you two. Caught in the middle. <laughs> you have no idea. I'm not convinced that there's any racial motive for this attack. No. No, I reckon the reason Weber isn't saying anything is because he started something off and got a slap. Well, yeah, you could be right, I guess. And Nicola Marsh is using this attack on Weber, right, to get some free publicity, and the super's playing right into her hands. Oh, come on, Brandon. What? Don't get so wound up about it. Look, let's treat it like any other job and get on with it. Oh, is that, that's what you're doing, is it? Yeah, but what? I saw you in the restaurant. You may be happy playing the friendly Asian copper sarge, but, you know, I'm not. <sighs> For goodness sake. Listen, there's some CCTV footage there of the attack on the corner shop. I think you better have a look at it. This isn't a good time. Cindy, of course I know how much this means to you. All right, all right, all right, I'm sorry. Look, I'll come and see you later, all right? I've got a bit of work and I'm coming back. I'll speak to you later. Problems, Philip? You don't want to know? You're damn right I don't want to know. And I hope that wasn't a personal call you took when you left the briefing. Now get yourself down to St Hughes with DC Thatcher. Uniform have picked up a GBH on a builder. Go. One minute I was loading up the truck and the next crack. Right on the back of the nut. I go down and the next thing I see is a big pair of boots coming my way. You didn't see any of this? No, I nipped out to the calf. No one else around when I come back, just dad lying on the ground. Thought he was dead at first, heart attack or something. Any idea why somebody did this? I mean, these things usually happen for a reason. 
Can you think why somebody would do this? All right, let's rule out the tooth fairy and try and narrow this down a bit, shall we? You rubbed anyone up the wrong way recently? Well, not me, mate. What about you? Sarge, mm -hmm. you better take a look at this. That's your waiter friend from the restaurant. Looks like he's gone into the shop and they've gone in after him. So, the waiter from the restaurant that Weber went to get attacked. Maybe BJ had something to do with the assault on Weber and this is retaliation. He didn't mention this when we spoke to him earlier, did he? Well, he wouldn't, would he? He attacked Weber. Hmm? So, we've got two young lads with a grudge against each other. Neither of them want to talk to us. Bang. What's next, Sarge? I'm going to go and talk to Chris Weber again and you deal with my waiter friend. OK? Yeah. Don't worry about me. It's not your fault. I better get back to this, all right? Yeah, sure. We'll see you there. Right, better check out the crime scene. You're keen? It's worth digging around. He's not being straight with us. Did you see his hands? Hey. Swollen knuckles. I bet he's given somebody a right-hander. You sure? Positive. It looks to me like Joel got back to his dad in the nick of time, but the question is, if he saw off his attacker, then why has he been so coy about it? It's just what I need, some muppet waste of my time. What? Uh, nothing, nothing. It just, um, seem a bit distracted. <laughs> if you want to be a counsellor, you go and work for social services. Sarge, I'm just trying Just to... don't. That was lying right there when I got back. But you don't think anything was nicked? Well, it don't look like it. All the power tools are locked away in the back of the office. Mind if you take a look around? Help yourself. Have you got any idea who might want to do this to your dad? Nah. <laughs> yeah. And if you did, you wouldn't tell us anyway. <laughs> hey. Have they said that you could go? Nah. Discharged myself. Hospitals aren't good for your health. I see. Right. Um, listen, is there anything more that you can tell me about this? Thanks case? for your help, Diaz de Costa. But I really don't want to take this any further. Are you sure? Right, well, I mean, if you change your mind, you know how to get in touch with me. Of course. By the way, there was this fight that broke out earlier um, in a corner shop. And it was one of the waiters from the Tiger Burning restaurant who was attacked by two men. Have you heard anything about this? How could I? I was in here. Yes, but what about your mates? What mates? The ones that you went and had curry with. Look, it's got nothing to do with me. All your mates. Hmm? Hiya. I'm DC Kane, Sun Hill. Is VJ around? VJ? No, it's not. What do you want from him? All right, could you um, get him to call me? What's he done? Uh, just let him know I was here. Cheers. I'm his father. He's in trouble. All right, no, he's not in trouble, sir. We think he might have been the victim of an assault earlier today. Assault? Was he hurt? No, he's fine. He seemed fine when we spoke to him this morning. Why were you talking to him? That's in relation to another case. What are you doing? I'm going to find my son. So you know where he is? There's going to be a protest. A demonstration about the new councillor. He might be there. Right. Well, I'll give you a lift. Yeah, well, he can handle himself, then. You feel it, feel everyone on you. Cash box is still here. Yeah, whoever clobbered the old man weren't on the rock. If they were, they were disturbed before they could get away with anything. Sarge, looks like money worries to me. Yeah, well, it could be. So what do you reckon, angry creditors, customers, what? Now, Joel said that his old man didn't have any enemies. Yeah. OK, so whoever waxed here all sneaked into the yard and crept up behind him without making a sound. Now, he's a big guy, so they'd have to be pretty handy themselves, which would make them both tough and light on their feet. So what are you getting at? Maybe the assailant didn't creep up on Cyril. Maybe they were there already. What are you saying Joel was in on this? Can't really, yeah. 
when the, the, the pressures of debt don't put a strain on a relationship. I don't know, maybe uh, an argument got out of hand. And Joe looks like he's been in a fight. Yeah, well, he is a boxer. Yeah, and I think they're supposed to wear gloves. You saw his knuckles. They were just bruised. And they were cut. So how often do you get to work in the restaurant yourself? Like normally, the, every night. See how things are going. Yeah? One of your customers was seriously assaulted. Were you aware of any trouble? Nothing out of the ordinary. Listen, do you reckon things have got worse since Nicola Marsh arrived on the scene? <laughs> I've been here 30 years. I have a thick skin. Yeah, what about your son? Does he just take it on the chin? He keeps his head down. Well, what's he doing down here, then? <laughs> you know what kids are like. They get it into their head, they want to change the world. Soon he'll be off to college to get a good education. Yeah, you must be proud of it. What's with all the questions? My son's the victim here, so let's just go and find him. All right, I'm going to take a look in there. You want to hang out here for a while, Mr. Sutton? Easy, mate. Hey, get away from me. Just calm down, Mr. Sutt. Oh, what's going on? My son has been attacked, and I hold you and your party responsible. What are you going to beat me up to? Oh, that's enough. Let's go. Come on. What side are you on? I'm not here to take sides. Well, maybe you should. Do you like me, my friend? Or have you so insulated behind your badge? Have you forgotten what it's really like? Uh, I know what it's like. Why do you think I've been put on this case? The best thing you can do is just take it easy and help me find your son. That's it. Has your old man got a problem with his hearing? No. So why didn't he hear his attacker coming up behind him? Well, you'd have to ask him that. See, random assaults are pretty rare, Joel. Nothing was stolen, so my guess is your dad knew who hit him. So what? Was it an argument or what? Well, I don't know. I wasn't there. Really? So how do you explain the cuts on your hand? I had a fight last night. In the ring. You can check. Oh, bare knuckles, was it? <laughs> no, I was late. I, I didn't have time to put my bindings on. You know, inside the glove. Yeah, right. It's true. <laughs> Hang on a minute. You don't seriously think that I did it? <laughs> what did they pay you lot for? My old man's lying in hospital and all you can do is point a finger at me. That's enough. Let's continue this down the station, shall we? I find it focuses the mind better. You can't force me to go. No, you're right. But if you don't cooperate, it makes you look more suspicious, doesn't it? There's no sign of him. Friends of yours? They're not from my nick. Just the same club. Then. Let me handle this. We received a report of assault down here. <coughs> so what's no, Marsh saying now? Don't oh. point your finger at me, please, sir. I'm going to find my son. Stay where you are. Hey, get off me! Nick him. Hey, hey, hey! There's no need for that. You're under arrest, mate. Take your hands off me. You're making a mistake. And why is that, then? That's why. Unit breaking reported at 142 Nelson Road. Who was you are from earlier? Sierra Oscar from 48. Show us dealing. You should have told me. You shouldn't have come on so strong. DC Kane, Sun Hill, that's all you had to say. I didn't get a chance, did I? You trying to stitch me up or something? Don't get excited. Basically, you got it wrong. You're lucky I'm not taking it any further. Really? I don't think you've heard the last of this either. Well, off you run to your governor. All sorted? For now, yes, you've been de-arrested. You're free to go. Thanks. Save it. Listen, when you see your son, tell him we want to speak to him. Sooner rather than later. So how's the business been doing? All right. Yeah? Well, we got the impression that you were struggling. You know, bills to pay. And that must create a bit of tension between you and your dad. So we're having a few problems. That doesn't mean I'm going to put him in hospital. Do you want to tell us what really happened? I wasn't there. Doesn't add up, Joel. Look, when I went out, Dad was fine. When I came back, he'd been beaten up. That's it. I, I can't tell you what I don't know. Oh, somebody's cut through that, hasn't they? Better take a look.
Gabriel? Oh! Are you me, Sarge? Yeah. I nearly stuck one on you. We checked the sandwich shop. Yeah, when you arrived, it was empty, and you were out of there in five minutes. And there's plenty of time to get back and see the fight. Or start it. You're barking at the wrong tree, mate. OK, let's say that you didn't hit your old man. We can still place you at the yard when the attack happened. What you got to hide? You got a minute? What's up? Is that Joel Brewer in there? Yeah. Why? Well, I've just had a phone call from Sergeant Ackman saying that someone's trashed his premises and his truck. And I mean proper trashed them. First his dad gets a kick in and out of this. Do you think someone's trying to tell him something? So, do you want the good news or the bad news first? Some good news you might have changed. I don't think you went to dad. All right, well, what's the bad news? You need a new truck. No, Vijay? Weber claims he knows nothing about the attack to the corner shop. Is that right? Come on, then, who's wound you up? DC Kane! I've had the Barton Street superintendent on the phone. As an own goal, it's pretty impressive. I'm sorry, sir, I was looking for Mr. Sud's son, VJ. I think he's got something to do with the assault on Chris Webber. Sanjeev Sud is a local community leader. And given the present situation, I'd like him on side helping to keep the peace, not getting arrested with one of my officers. Just how did you manage to pull off such a stunt? It wasn't a stunt. Nicola Marsh accused him of assault, and that PC just waded in. And you didn't identify yourself? He didn't give me a chance. Integrity testing is the job of the DPS, Brandon. It's not yours. There was no need to arrest me or Mr. Sud. That PC just overreacted. You're lucky this isn't being taken any further. Yes, sir. You're not happy about something, so what's your problem? I haven't got one. Come on, Brandon. I'm interested to hear what you've got to say for yourself. All right. I think we should treat all crimes equally and nick criminals regardless of their colour. I agree. So why is it a priority to treat this assault in the corner shop and this attack on Chris Webber as racist incidents? It's not as simple as you think. Now that Marsh is on the council, people will start listening to her. So if she starts kicking up a fuss about the way Sunhill operates, I'll have the borough commander or even the commissioner on my back. I have to think about the bigger picture. If you were in my position, what would you do? I wouldn't let Marsh pull my strings. If you think I'm pandering to her, I'm not. Well, if you're just trying to keep the yard happy, that sounds like the easy option to me. Stop there! Before you go any further, let me remind you that I'm your superintendent. If you don't like the way I'm running things here, just let me know. I'll arrange a transfer. Well, that's very kind of you, but I'd like to stay on yet. Well, then, you worry about your job and let me worry about mine. I will. You asked me what I thought, and I think you've made the wrong call. And sometimes that's as racist as doing nothing. You are very close to the edge, DC game. Look, I'm sorry, babe, I can't get away from work. Yeah, look, of course I am. Look, I'm sorry, I'll sort it out. Right. We've got no witnesses. And the Brewers still don't want to play ball. Look, if they don't want to help, forget them. We're not going to get anywhere. But it's obvious they're hiding something. Look, why don't we talk it through with the DI? Look, I'm running the case. I call the shots. Now, if you excuse me, I'm not going to go Oh, you going out? Yes. Unless you want to run that past the DI as well. No, Sarge. Good. Just keep your mouth shut. I'll be back later. Sarge! Come on, now you go.
being hauled up in front of the headmaster. She's trying to make out it's my fault I got arrested. <laughs> Maybe it's your guilty conscience. No, I wonder if he actually believes all this stuff coming out of his mouth. He's only interested in going to the yard with the right crime figure. Brandon, it's his job. Are you happy just there on the fence? You're just spoiling for a fight, aren't you? Look, if you've got baggage, you deal with it. You do not bring it into my unit, all right? What? Yeah. VJ Sud, he's in the front office, wants to talk to us. You promised me you'd take the day off. It's been busy. I'm not listening to your excuses. I've been phoning you, babe. It's not the same. Frightened, Phil. So you've got no reason to be. If you're negative about the IVF treatment, it's not going to help, is it? Got an insight into the female mind, have you? I'm just saying. I am being positive. I keep being positive. It's rubbish. I'm not suddenly going to get pregnant because I tell myself to. Does that work? Get rid of it. Look, we'll find out tomorrow. 24 hours from now, and we'll know for sure. A doctor now, are you? Look, just picture yourself in his office tomorrow. And if he says I'm not, how will it be then? Where will we be then? Have you thought about that one? Look, I know I shouldn't have run off after the attack this morning, but I just didn't want the police involved. Oh, Vijay, you're the victim, aren't you? I don't understand why you didn't tell us something about this earlier when we spoke. We could have done something about yeah, it. Maybe there's another reason. Maybe you were involved in the attack on Chris Webber and this was some kind of revenge from his mates. That's what I'm here to talk to you about. Good. Spit it out. Yeah. Webber's mates came after me this morning because I put him in hospital the other night. So, why have you decided to tell us now? It seemed like the right thing to do. So something happened at the restaurant? I said before they were lagered up, but they were just completely out of control. My father told them to leave and Weber hit him. We had to pull Weber off and luckily we managed to throw him out. And they didn't even pay their bill. Did you go after them? No. We were just glad to see the back of them. So, um... What happened next, please? Well, I was driving home after we shot the restaurant for the night, when I saw Weber staggering down the street. I shouted at him and he came over and started kicking the car. I told him to stop, but he wouldn't. So you hit him, yeah? It wasn't that difficult. He was so drunk he hardly knew what his name was. I just... I'm sorry, Vijay, we're going to have to arrest you since you've admitted to carrying out this assault. I know that. Yeah. Back to me, I'm wondering where you are. Rob, how's the Brewer investigation going? Oh, well, it's um, stalled for the moment. Stalled? Why's that? Oh, well, for a start, we've got a shortage of witnesses. And, and the Brewers are still keeping still. And your plan to address this is? I'm working on it, Sam. Go. So where's DS Hunter, then? Oh, well, he was there a minute ago. I... Don't be clever, Rob. I'm not. You tell DS Hunter I want a word with him when he decides to show his face. Yes, go. Good news, Mr. Webber. Somebody's confessed to assaulting you. Have they? Apparently there was a confrontation in the Indian restaurant you went to. Do you remember that? No, not really. The problem is there is a discrepancy between um, your story and the person who says they assaulted you because he says that there were words between you and you say that you didn't see your assailant. That's right. That would be if I mix up then. Mm. Vijay Sood, a waiter at the Tiger Burning restaurant, he says that he assaulted you. The waiter? He did it, did he? Well, well, well. But you already know that I think your mates attacked Vijay at the corner shop. Nah. This has come as quite a surprise. Still. Best we forget it, I reckon. 
You what? I've been thinking about it. I really don't want to take it any further. And why is that, Chris? Because mm. maybe you're not telling us everything. Because maybe you provoked the attack. There's been enough trouble already. Life's too short. <laughs> I'm sure you got better things to do with your time anyway. Still, thanks for your help, though, eh? Can I go now? Gladly. Once you've signed a withdrawal statement. My pleasure. I hear you've had a result. Ah. Vijay Sood has confessed to assaulting Chris Webber. That'll please his father. But Chris doesn't want to take it any further, though. Because maybe they're just two lads with too much testosterone. We think that the attack on the corner shop was an act of revenge by Weber's mates on Vijay. Presumably, he just wants to drop charges because he doesn't want us pinning anything on them. Or maybe Weber wants to take matters into his own hands. Who knows? If he does, this will run and run. And we need to put an end to it now. So what do you suggest? Stick a couple of officers in Sud's restaurant this evening. If Weber does come back for more, we'll be waiting. And if we clamp down on this now, word will get out that we're taking it seriously. Good for image and results. Yes, sir, right. Let's just hope we're doing the right thing. Yeah, cool. It's about eight. Nice, baby. Yeah, Nix has been looking for you. Oh, yeah, what'd you say? I said I didn't know where you were. Nice one. Yeah, even Ken would have done better than that. DS Hunter. My office now. I said now! Where have you been? And don't try telling me it's to do with the Brewer case. No, I slipped out. You slipped out? For over two hours? What's going on? It's personal. Oh, is it? When I assign you to an investigation, I expect you to just get on with it, not go swanning around to goodness knows where. It was important. This job is important. Now, I'm under pressure to get results here. Yeah, well, so am I. Look, I apologise for not consulting you first. All right? Can I go back and do some work? Well, if it's not too much trouble. And if you're thinking of cooking something up with DC Thatcher, you should tell me. Because I will find out. Well, I'm not. All right, I just need some time off of work. You of all people should understand that. Your personal life has interfered with your work often enough. How many times was Abigail here? Now you listen to me. Considering the amount of grief you gave me about my daughter. It's a bit rich, isn't it? You coming in here and expecting some kind of support. Now, I don't know what your problem is, Philip, but don't blame it on having kids. Yeah, well, don't worry. There's no chance of that. I don't know. It's a super call, man. It's probably a waste of time, but we need two of them. All right, you two. Need a couple of buds for an operation tonight. You interested? Uh, well, I could do it the other time. Was it? I need to stick a couple of officers in an Indian restaurant tonight. It's no guarantee anything's going to happen, but you get a free curry out of it. What do you say? Uh, I think I'll give it a miss. Well, why not? Yeah, I'm up for it. Actually, a couple's going to be less conspicuous than two lads. Hey, Sarge? <laughs> we hardly look like a couple. Oh, come on, it'll be a laugh. Well, it's a free meal, I suppose. Yeah, all right. Nice one. It's a date, then. You happy to share? Sorry? Well, I thought we'd get a selection. Oh, yeah, whatever. Uh, no, thank you. Are you ready to order, sir? In a minute, yeah. I don't think we should be drinking. We've got to blend in. You look nice. Oh, thanks. Oh, come on, June. No, honestly, I'm fine, really. Relax. Might as well enjoy ourselves. Cheers. Cheers. 
Right. Let's have a look. Hey, this is looking very good indeed, isn't it? He's got some nerve coming back here. His mates are the uh, the boys from the CCTV, the ones who started that fight in the corner shop. Looks like he wants to deal with it himself. Super was right, huh? Yeah, looks like he was. Well, we're going to have to arrest him, so I'll call the van. It must be Chris Webber with his arm in a sling. What are you doing here? Oh, we've all had our fun. So I thought it's time to put it all behind us. I don't want an apology. I want you out of my restaurant. That's not quite what I meant, mate. I was eating a meal on the house and we'll forget about it. We'll have three beers and some pop them to start with. We don't want any trouble. Neither do we, mate. Just want a curry. You better phone Sergeant to Costa just in case. What, are you going to serve us or what? No. Oh, you're going to get your dad to do it for you? Get out. Or what? In you come, guys. Better make it quick. Get out, Webber. You're not welcome here. That's up to me now. You owe me and you. That's enough. We're police officers. Stay where you are. Police. Hey, hey, hey. You behave yeah. yourself, big man. Stop there. Right there. Get out over here. <laughs> Sit down. Put that down. Hello again, Chris. You're going to regret this. Why did you go back there, Chris? Cool. Why did you go well, back I'm there? I'm not a racist. You're way off the mark. Well, put us on the mark. Oh, I'd have a word with the old geezer if I were you. Come on. There's been an allegation made against you. I know. I assaulted Chris Webber. Tell us what happened. It's just as Vijay told you, except I was on the car too. We were going home. Webber blocked our way, and I got out to reason with him. You know the rest. Well, you've certainly got a temper on you. I saw that when we were with Nicola Marsh. Your son told us that Chris Webber assaulted you in the restaurant before all this happened. That's right. Did Mr. Webber make any racial comment? Mr. Sood, can you just answer the question? No, he didn't. But he came into my restaurant causing trouble and I'm sick of it. I understand your frustration, but that's no excuse for putting him in the hospital. Wait here. Brandon. Constable. So, Nicola Marsh is here. She'll have to wait. I'm Superintendent Okaro. Superintendent, eh? You've hit the big time. Now, we're glad you finally want to make a complaint for the assault. That's right. I just wanted to make sure you were aware of all the details and to assure you that we'll leave no stone unturned. Now, Mr. Sud's been arrested and we've interviewed him. And it seems that before he assaulted you, there was an incident in the restaurant, and he tells us you hit him, which means you will also be arrested for assault. What? We'll have to interview your friends, and, unfortunately, it may be hanging over you for some time. If you both insist on taking this further, ultimately we'll have to leave it to the courts to decide. That was a pretty successful operation tonight. Told you it'd be a laugh. I didn't say that exactly. I must say, I was pretty impressed with the way you handled that blow. Wouldn't want to get on your wrong side. So, it wasn't so bad working with me after all? Shame it ended so abruptly. Just when I was starting to enjoy myself. Superintendent, thanks for seeing me. What can I do for you? I wanted to thank you for finding the man who assaulted Mr Webber. News travels fast. I don't like saying this, but it's a shame Mr. Sud forgot his responsibility to the community. Luckily for Mr. Sud, Chris Webber's decided not to prosecute. What? It seems there was a certain amount of provocation. But it was a vicious assault. I know it would have suited your campaign had Sanjeev Sud been charged, but it's probably best not to push this any further, don't you think? What are you saying? The attack on Chris Webber was not because of race. The incident happened because of local tension, and that's as much your responsibility as anyone else's. The community needs your support. 
not your interference. These problems aren't going to go away, you know. Oh, I know they won't. I look forward to dealing with you in the future. Good night, Mrs. Marsh. Right, uh, I am done for the day, I think. See you tomorrow. Yeah, you will. Oh, good results, sir. For today. But I'm sure we'll be seeing Nicola Marsh again, now that she's on the council. Can't be easy being pulled this way, lad. No. And you're never going to please everyone. Oh, I, I wouldn't worry about Brandon, sir. <laughs> I won't. But it did make me think about how I handled things today. I prioritised certain cases because of Nicola Marsh. Maybe I did that because I was worried about the possible reaction from the yard. But you had to take Marsh seriously, sir. Yes. But it's easy to please everyone, sit back and wait for promotion. Hard thing is to make decisions, even though you know everyone won't like them. Anyway, that's enough of politics and policing for today. I'll leave you to it. Good night, sir. Night. I thought it was later. The evening must have dragged on. No, I didn't mean that. What did you mean, then? We could still make last orders. The other's gone down the pub. I don't know. Um, I just thought... Is something wrong? Maybe it's not such a good idea. Oh. Anyway, I'm a bit knackered. Yeah, well, that's fine. It's no problem. I'm really then. sorry, June, if I've given you the wrong impression. No, it's my fault. See you tomorrow, then. You left my daughter in the hands of a paedophile. I'm sure I know you from somewhere. I've just seen an old mate of yours, Dennis Weaver. You can't believe it like this. And if you blow your top and this lot find out about you kissing me, 